All right, so I'm down here in my storage area to pick up a few parts. All right, so I want to start off by grabbing fuel pumps. So I have one, two, three fuel pumps. And what we got? Bumpers, grill, trim. And I also want to get my starter. And yeah, here are those horns I talked about that I had a surplus of. So I have to sell these if anybody's interested. Let me know. You can definitely have them and extra trim parts. And a whole bunch of other little goodies. Not a Delco fuel pump. It's the same style. It just doesn't have the AC logo on top or on the bottom. Um, but it's the right style. So I don't think I'm going to use that one. This fuel pump. This is the one I think that might have been rebuilt a while ago. This one has the correct numbers stamped into it. It has an AC logo, but it doesn't have one on the bottom. Last but not least is the most dirty fuel pump, which is from a pile of spare parts my dad had from his car. I think this is from way back in the day. So it has the AC mark on the bottom, AC mark on top, and it was rebuilt on this tag. It says it's a 4657, which is what we want. I don't know if the number is correct on the body or not, but I think this is the pump I'm going to pick. Of course, it happened to be the most greasy out of them all, so it just might be leaking a little bit because I didn't have a correct fuel pump on the 63 when we took it apart. I had a replacement one on it, so we pitched it. So I think these are going to be my winners. So I guess I'll first definitely gunk this thing. All right, let's go gunk our fuel pump. Some original gunk degreaser. We'll see what we end up with at the end here. Here's the fuel pump from the Black Lagoon. I soaked it in some gunk and then I scrubbed it and soaked it and scrubbed it and then uh, whenever I was done I washed it off by hand and it's a little bit of Dawn dish soap. I wanted to get most of the stuff off before I took it apart. That way it wouldn't really get inside the fuel pump. Um, so this way it's relatively clean. And once it's completely apart, I'll clean it again. That was just a rough cut. So I want to take a second here and see where all three of these bodies are located to each other. Um, so from this fuel point here, there are two screws away from the push rod. And when we flip it over on its back, the AC logo is turned upside down as probably about 9 or 10 o'clock so maybe 11 so we'll just take note of that that way whenever we put it back together it's in the same general orientation that it was before By taking out those two screws and taking off the rear cover with the two diaphragms inside so take that off and set those aside. Well, there's a little bit of water in here, so we'll dry that out. And I'll dry out the water that's pouring out of the bowls. So after that excitement, I'm going to remove all these cover screws and set those aside. Alright, so I got the pieces apart and I took the diaphragm out of the main body and as you can see, this guy is really toast. It was corroding in there for quite a long time. And there was a lot of corrosion, just the rust falling in here, so I need to clean this out some more to get rid of the corrosion. So next I'm going to drill out this pin here press this out so I can take this apart. There's a new pin, a new spring in here and the new kit I have over here and then I'll get this cover off after that. So here are all the pieces that I cleaned. This is they're almost their final clean. I gunked everything. 
I hand washed it with Dawn dish soap, took everything apart, washed it again, and now I want to press out the check valves and then I'll do the final wash and start assembling. Before I did that I wanted to uh, make a note of which direction the check valves were facing because these are the same valves, they're just flipped different ways. So here's the new one. You can see there's a the little rubber seal in there and whenever that seal is pushed down from the diaphragm, which is mechanically driven, that's what allows fuel to flow from one side to the other. So you want to make sure you get those in the same orientation. So I just wanted to document that the inside pushes down. And this is the outside over here. That side is labeled in. This one just has a flat spot. Um, out pushes up. And they both install from the back side. So I'll just get the gas pressed out and clean it up and then put the new ones in. All right, so to press out the check valves, I'm going to use a half inch socket. Just give it a little light tap and they should come out. Clean it, good to go. All the original pieces are prepped and ready to go. Everything's washed. After I washed it, I used some compressed air and blew everything off so everything's nice and dry. Made sure I got it in all the channels and everything that way. There's no water and I let it sit for a little bit just to finish air drying. And then I unpacked all the pieces from my rebuild kit from Paragon. So here are my two check valves. I'll start probably with those. Alright, so I have my first check valve installed and it is on the inside labeled in, so therefore it goes down which is correct. And I'm going to do the outside which is flipped the other way. So I just made sure I found a socket that fit right around the inner edge and for the other one I found one that fit around this inner race. So for this one, I'm using an 11 16 socket. Now that I have the main body pretty well assembled with the push rod, the main diaphragm, and the new oil seal, and I have the check valves installed, I'm going to install the rear cover plate. Now the rebuild kit comes with two different style gaskets. The one is designed for the fuel pump that has the single hole in the center to screw it on, and the other one is for this application which has the two screw holes here, so you just punch out the plugs, line it up, and put it on. So I'm going to install both halves of the bodies together, and whenever you tighten up these screws that go around the perimeter, you have to have the diaphragm fully extended. You have to push down the whole way. So. I'm going to get everything just a little bit snug. Not, I'm just going to loosely install everything, then fully compress it, and then I'll go and torque them all down. This next step is really important. Um, whenever you tighten all of these screws down, you need to fuel compress the fuel pump so you need to push the piston the whole way down and tighten it but you can see why you would have to do that because you have all these little wrinkles in here and if you just try to push it down yourself you might not get them all out because of the way the diaphragm works you're trying to stretch it 
but if you pull it down and it draws it down from the center, it'll stretch it out and it'll take all of those little wrinkles out and that'll prevent it from leaking. So I'm going to do that and then I'm probably going to try to tighten it, kind of like how you would a wheel, just jump from corner to corner until we get them on, go around a couple times. I tried to keep it relatively even the first time I did it, so I might tighten it down just a little bit more before I worry about fully compressing it. All right, I decided to quit being a putz, and I put the fuel pump in my workmate, and I compressed the piston as far as I could, and then I'll just break these loose a little bit and then retighten them just to make sure they're good, and I'll go in the correct pattern that I wanted to. The spring is a little heavier than I thought it was, a little harder to hold it steady. All right, so I was getting ready to put the fuel pump in, and I remembered that I need to have special fittings that attach from the hard line to the soft line into the pump. And I thought I was gonna have to go and order some more, but then I remembered in my stroke of genius that whenever I ordered the hard lines for the car, whenever we did the frame, way before we even had the body, and we're close to being ready, Jared asked me, do you wanna order the whole kit? with all the little fittings and everything and every single fuel line and I said sure so I had them the whole time I didn't even know it so I have to figure out where each one goes and I have everything here to plumb up the fuel line except the carburetor it's kind of a big piece to be missing but um, whenever that comes in we can just slap it on so alright so I realized that the lines I have are all to connect the fuel filter so I need to get little angle line in the connector and I can put that on my next order whenever I go and get my my new gaskets and my carb spacer and my fuel filter so that's okay but I'll at least mount up the fuel pump I do not have the correct bolts right now and I don't think the ones that are in the bottom there in the lower plate are correct either but that's okay, I'll put these in for now, and when I put that order in, like I said, I'll get all that stuff at once. We'll make sure the push rods engage each other. I can feel them resting on each other, so that's good. So after a few hours work, we took the fuel pump from being an ugly sludge monster from the Black Lagoon, and cleaned them up, restored them, and he's now in his new home on the 63, and I just loosely attached the fuel line going up and laid out the one that goes from the fuel filter to the carb so you can just imagine the fuel filter and a carb right here and it's pretty much done there you know we're getting there get there and I was going to put on this little fuel line but I'll wait till I get the connector and I'll hook it into here and then jam that hose on there I think it'll be easier to do it that way so I'll just put some tape over those inlets for now. And I think I'll leave him there because he makes me feel like I'm getting closer to having a carburetor on this thing if he's there. So just tape them up. Alright, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. We just did a quick restoration on the fuel pump. Got one more part of the 63 done. It's always good to start a project and finish it and have it on the car in the same day. And what gave me inspiration to work on this today, ironically, is that the fuel pump on my daily driver went out so it's at the shop getting fixed because they have to drop the tank and, and all that fun stuff you know fuel injection is not as easy as it used to be where it's just on the side of the engine two bolts take it out and you can just pinch the line and you're good to go it's a little more complicated than that now so that's going to do it for this video if you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and check out some of the following videos in this area. I appreciate you guys watching. Every view counts. I'll catch you in the next one.